Thank you so much. So this is Wednesday, April 26th, market development meeting for all of California. I'm joined with Tom Cotter and many other California leaders and tier three mentors. Today's training is gonna really focus on NEM 3.0. Uh, we've trained on this once or twice before. You can always go to Knowledge Base, check out the Market Spotlight California page. And myself, I have two or three trainings on NEM 3.0 already on my YouTube and much more to come. I really want to stress that this is an evolving training. With Tom's 16 years and my nine, 10 years, I presented on NEM3 last night and closed the deal. And I didn't know what I was saying until it was coming out of my mouth. And we are going to cover that. This is changing all the time. Vision proposal does not have battery NEM3 capabilities yet, hopefully the next few business days. Solo does not have batteries without backup uh, calculating correctly. We'll go, we'll go over that. So there will be a transitionary period. Also with the modeling, what will the leftover utility bill be? What's the range of what it could be? Every home and every usage is different, different hours of day, different facing directions, east, south, west, batteries with no backup, batteries with backup, or just doing a solar system. So we're going to cover a lot of great things today. But again, please be patient as, as this really is a learning curve. And we're going to have future trainings on them three. We're going to have Goodly uh, VP of Compliance, Julia, training us on them three. We'll have the Hawaii team on here training us on them three. And there was selling in, in no NEM and selling in Hawaii trainings at SolarCon as well. So be patient during this transition, be positive. I can't tell you how amazing that sale was yesterday. They don't know about NEM3. They don't know what the pricing's like. I went up against Sunrun and it's signed instantly. And what we have in front of us is, is freaking amazing. We're gonna keep getting referrals. Nobody knows what they're getting. We're gonna present the best options and they're gonna pick one. All right, so make sure to use knowledge base and we'll jump in here. Obviously, NEM3 is a third version of California's rooftop policy. It changed April 14th. Credits are lower, compensation drops, and there is a true up every single month rather than annually. Um, always sell clean deals. Make sure the utility bill net matches the name. So under NEM3, the exported solar giving back to the grid, you really don't get paid much for it. 10%, 30%. Homeowners can only size up to 150% offset. There's monthly net billing now. It's no longer 12 months. And there are long-term savings, you know, over 10, 15, 20 years. NEM2 is gone. Bye-bye. Hangover is done. This is affecting SoCal, Edison, SDG, and EPG. &E. Only those three are affected by NEM 3.0. Every other utility or municipality like Burbank, Pasadena, SMUD, Azusa, Anaheim, LADWP is going to be a popular one. These are not affected by net metering three. They generally all have their own net billing policies and buybacks and credits. And if you don't know exactly what their buybacks are in Riverside, LADWP has a power bank. You know, some of these utilities might do a two month billing, not a one month. You really want to make sure you understand the buybacks. Um, and some of these don't allow batteries. Like I believe Burbank doesn't even allow batteries. A lot of these don't allow offsets above 100%. So make sure to know your municipalities wherever you are. But for NEM3 training today, it'll be focusing on the big three, which is the ones that already took effect. The NEM3 um, grandfather clause, according to Julia with compliance, is five years. So whatever these rates are currently, uh, the buyback rate schedule broken down per month, per hour, and different in each of these three utilities, she said is five years. And then thereafter that, it can change every two years. Now, just for context, NEM 3 California has had it too good for too long. Your homeowners waited too long. We're done with that. I don't even want to talk about this anymore. Some people wanted to leave out of this market. That's silly. 
like we're just getting started. By the end of summer, we're going to be higher volume than we were last summer. We're probably going to start having more volume this next month or two, in my opinion, than we did a year ago. And if you look at Florida, Texas, Nevada, their rates have been low for a long time. Our rates are freaking 30 to 62 cents. I mean, in four to nine, five to eight, it's insane. They'll get batteries here and solar and a good value prop better than these other three states. So uh, we have a lot of good solutions. We're going to build the value, present what we have, sell them on different examples um, to definitely succeed with this NEM3. And you really want to focus on no more savings, you know, not 50, 60% savings like we were used to. No longer a five, six year payoff. Um, just rising rates, shielding yourself, hedging your bets. Big tax credits. Congrats, you get a bigger tax credit with these batteries now compared to people that didn't get them. Long term savings. Yes, 10, 25 years, there are savings. Security and ownership. Uh, Obviously, home equity, value, saving for retirement or having a fixed monthly bill, like with a lease storage, for example, and having freedom and independence, owning your own power, storing your own power, blackout protection, and controlling your price for the energy you produce for years and years to come. So here's a few quick objections. Some of you may have seen a few of these already. I will have some new content sprinkled in here. I heard the solar industry is not gonna do so well after the change. I know what you mean, other people said the same thing. What we found is that it's not much different when we went from NEM1 to NEM2. Did you know about that change? Did you know that Hawaii pays zero for any energy given to the grid? Yet every home in Hawaii has solar and a battery. The utilities will continue to gouge us to death and we will use more electricity with EVs, heat pumps, pool pumps, HVAC, and the electrification of the home. California still requires solar guys on detached ADUs and new home builds, by the way. Instead of giving energy back to the grid, now you get to store it on site in a battery with NEM 3.0. Before they used to use the grid as a storage. Now we get to use it on site and have added benefits and larger tax credits. And here's a few more objection handling for NEM 3. Feel free to take a screenshot of this or watch this recording. Later, if you're not watching the recording already, you must have heard about the change in solar. It's still great. You will save thousands of dollars long term, and you could qualify for thousands of dollars incentives while they last. But the compensation has changed. They won't pay as much. So it's best to simply store it on site versus in the grid. I heard it's not going to be worth going solar anymore. It's way too expensive. What is true about that misconception is now more beneficial to go solar with storage, which is better than solar only and comes with so many more advantages, including a huge tax credit incentive. Heard the industry is not gonna do well with NEM3. I know what you mean. Other transitions before were scary, but what is true is that NEM3 was a big change. Utility company are no longer purchasing power from for a one-to-one -one rate. Solar is expected to more than double in business over the next 10 years, especially with the tax credit getting extended. And by the way, guys, Jordan Shaw last week trained that solar is just gonna start to get started in 2026, like Jonathan Budd said on the stage at U Utah. Um, we're just in the training grounds. You know, 4 million homes in the US is only four to 5% of the homes. There's no saturation whatsoever. We're just getting warmed up. And we don't even know the technology that's coming. You know, my solar is being produced right now, right here. My home gets to use it first. It can check if the battery is full and if my car is playing, I can charge the car. And then if there's anything left, maybe eventually it'll heat the water or it'll do something else before it goes back to the grid. So we, we just can't even foresee what these batteries are gonna be doing with microgrids and EVs and other devices and other things that we're gonna sell and be able to re-monetize. So again, knowledge base, check out the FAQ, the toolkit, the YouTubes, the trainings. You're already watching this market development meeting every Wednesday, 3 p.m. on Zoom. Right here, we have some Solar Edge batteries. So bottom right, we have four batteries. Um, we've, got, we've got the uh, this device here for Enphase, I believe is like the load controller, automatic transfer switch, 
When you have backup protection, blackout protection, there's more parts needed. Someone asked, why is it so much less money when I don't have backup or blackout protection? Well, you don't need load controllers. You don't need automatic transfer switches. You don't need to pull circuit breakers out of a main panel and move them into a sub panel. You don't need a master certified electrician. You save on labor and parts where a battery with no backup is just gonna be used mostly for self-consumption. Store during the morning, use back between four to nine or five to eight. Now, Power has came out with three really good options. So the first option I'm gonna start on the right here is called Power Basic. Take a note of this. The ideal offset is around 60 to 70% if you're doing solar only, no battery. So last night I started with a 65% offset solar only to show them the first most economical option. So that is small solar offset only and uh, 60 to 70% no batteries, okay guys? And then we have Power Saver, NEM 3.0 protection. So that's gonna be one battery two batteries, three batteries, four batteries, without backup blackout protection. And I'll go over the prices of that in just a second. So it's gonna store that energy during the day instead of sending it back to the grid and getting pennies. And then between four to nine or five to eight, when rates are 50, 60 cents, your home gets to use it, right? So if the sun's out, we want our clients charging their car, solar car running their pool pumps before 4 p.m. Solar sun's out, pool, right? We, we wanna coach our clients to use those devices when the sun's out before four o'clock. And that's gonna dramatically help them. So these batteries are really cool. If someone wants to tell me what 62 cents between four to nine is times 10 kilowatt hour battery storage, a battery might be able to save a client five, six bucks a day. And that's today's prices. Guys, um, instead of sending that energy back and getting pennies, a 10 kilowatt hour battery can possibly avoid 60 cents a kilowatt hour between four to nine or five to eight. And I'm telling you things, these things because this is what I've told clients as I'm selling them. And what ended up happening is they sold themselves a battery without blackout protection. They, didn't, they don't have blackouts and they also have a generator. So straight up, they said, if I can save three or four grand per battery, I don't need that. And then they sold themselves a second battery. And my price was probably still cheaper than Sunrun. And I'll get into that in a second. The last option here, ladies and gents, powerhouse. It's partial or full backup. So we're talking about batteries that do have backup blackout protection. A couple thousand more dollars in price. I'll show you in a sec. And during a blackout, you get to select three to four circuits per battery. Maybe you have multiple batteries. Maybe you do three or four batteries for more of a full home. Here's a new slide I've kind of came up with since SolarCon and, and Tom and Rick and others, but this will be changing as we go along. A general rule of thumb, it's always good to double the amount of storage kilowatt hours to the solar kilowatt system. For example, 10 kilowatt solar system should have 10 kilowatt, sorry, I messed it up, 20 kilowatt hours, forgot my H, of battery storage. Just want to make sure that makes sense for everyone. A good rule of thumb, whether you're doing backup or not, double the amount of storage kilowatt hours compared to your solar kilowatt system. Now, if you're really being extra careful, it could be a little bit more, right? That's obviously a 50% ratio. We're not sure if the home's going to use 50% when the sun's out. So you could go more, but this is a general rule of thumb, according to our amazing friends that are selling in Hawaii. Also, 
uh, Julia and maybe Hawaii as well. If it's no batteries, um, 60% offset, 70% offset is the sweet spot. Power basic, no battery. And some general recommendations as you're selling. Show 100% offset first with batteries. Ask the right questions during discovery. Backup, no backup, blackouts. What's more important? Once you show them 100% offset and the numbers look good, whether it's cash or uh, lease storage, maybe a loan, then move them if you got their buy-in, then show them the 120%. This is where we'd like to be. But a good rule of thumb is, you know, start off with showing them 100% offset first. Let homeowner know that the post solar utility bill will be a range. Solo guys, I wholeheartedly believe is not accurate right now. It will be more in my opinion. Lean into cash and Sonova lease storage hard. Hawaii is doing 70% lease storage. I just heard that Sunrun has shift. It's an LG battery, no backup. And our solar edge and end phase battery is far superior to LG. If you look at a company like Freedom Forever, that battery at LG is $6,500 adder. I'll show you our adder in just a second for a solar edge battery, which is way better. It's about $8,500 with sales tax. Um, they are selling at Sunrun and Freedom Forever quite a darn lot of lease Sunrun PPA shift with an LG battery, a lot. And then lastly, Loans is not my favorite right now. Dealer fees, interest rates, some of the lenders aren't super strong, but we have new options coming for that. So if it's me, I'm leaning into cash, Sonova lease, and then saying, hey, look into your own funding or let me show you some of our funding if you're set on the ownership option. And everyone's going to have their own opinion on this. I know some of you have a, like Redwood City has a credit union. Some of you guys in NorCal do that. A lot of you in California, if you Google EECU Credit Union California, not Texas, I made that mistake. They have an ecological loan here up to $40,000 maximum, 15 year, 5.5 interest rate. You kind of have to say you're in the educational field and you'll get a 40K loan approved with little fees, which is amazing. So you could sell cash to a customer we are launching Enium, according to Jonathan Budd. That's going to help with the Puerto Rico market. I believe they're another lender and other lenders to come. Or, you know, they can always look to their personal bank or their local credit union as well to get funds. In my opinion, our loans with our interest rates and dealer fees will be a little bit harder to pencil if you're trying to show some better numbers or some lower prices. So just be mindful of this as you're moving along. I'm gonna pause for a sec, Tom. Anything that we wanna to touch on so far? I know this is a lot of content. Hey, Jonathan Bernas, I, I did put something in the chat, just something about putting panels on the three sides of the roof, um, you know, east, south, and west. Uh, just kind of the mindset of just thinking about your house producing solar energy throughout all hours of the day is a definitely important aspect. Um, but the, the perspective before was south and west because you got a better turnaround, but that's going to completely change uh, with NEM3. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and Kenny Fries had a question, Jonathan. How would you approach that post solar bill conversation? Do we want to talk about open solar and kind of look yeah, at uh, different get, things here? Yeah, thanks. I'll get to that in a second. Okay. I do see some, someone asked about power basic, the offset. I, I heard 60%, but yeah, you're saying 30 to 50%, Tom, or maybe higher. And to Owen's point, the Julia, the head of compliance, did say that south facing is not actually that ideal anymore. Possibly putting some east, charge that battery up west for that afternoon. So yeah, I don't have the perfect formula for that, but I do think a blended approach is likely going to be more beneficial as we move forward. And I'll touch on the post-solar bill in, in just a second for you guys here. 
Hey, uh, J- John, one more thing too, sorry to chime in here. Uh, I've had clients send me their utility usage and you can do it by hour. So I know that's a lot of data, uh, but you can actually use that data and translate when people are using their energy. Right. Uh, of course, it would do some Excel skills, but. Yeah, so eventually our, our proposal tools will have green button data, which is API, the homeowner enters their logins and it'll extract the timely hourly data. That That is soon to come. You know, I think a few of you guys signed up for an Aurora account and Aurora, I think offers that tool. Some of us check open solar, we check Sonova, we check solo and, you know, obviously vision will be showing as well. But yeah, I, I do look forward to when that's more automated or use Aurora because I don't even want to mention that Excel sheet to uh, to everybody here. The real value of storage, again, dig into the, the benefits of storage, grid reliability. You know, I, I hate to use a scare tactic, but do you think, Mr. Customer, with EVs, our grid already can't survive? Do you think the blackouts are going to continue with this 120-year infrastructure? And so grid reliability, hedging their Vets taking care of their family, the kids, loved ones, elderly, the fridge, you know, protection and bigger tax credits, bigger incentives. And there is an SGIP rebate, SGIP. So look, work with your local tier three mentors that know how to sell batteries and ask them what your SGIP rebate is. If you want to put it into the chat in Southern California, I generally say conservatively, ma'am, you'll get $1,400 SGIP rebate from Edison. I believe they have funds available in their bucket. Uh, if you're in a high virus zone or low income, it could be more. Water well pump on property could be more. That's all I say. And it's 80, 90%. It's a possibility. I know every utility is different and everyone's going to be going batteries right now. So I don't know what those buckets are going to look like. Um, so work with people that are familiar with the SGIP in the big three utilities. And again, more and more benefits of storage here. These are two, I'm gonna say sexy looking solar edge batteries. And the uh, top left here, my garage, had, I've got the EV charger, the battery storage, and these are the solar edge installations. Uh, pretty clean looking as well. All right, take a screenshot of this. Write this down. These are the prices of the batteries before sales tax. So if you, if you just want to add 10% to these prices, that's a safe bet. It's obviously not on labor, but just to keep it simple, you could add some sales tax to it. I also want to point out that there is some margin built into these prices, about 10%. So if you know if someone wants to put in the chat the solar edge battery at 13095 how much margin do i have on that at 10% and then if that margin is 10% how much commission am i getting on that and what would the price of that be with sales tax as well so it's it's a little bit variable wait till power vision is here and Solo already adds sales tax in this as well, since we're all California add the sales tax. So of course we have Enphase batteries, Solar Edge batteries, and soon to come Franklin batteries as well. Now on the right here, Jonathan Budd posted in Facebook Power Pioneers. I want you to focus in on the middle, no backup no blackout protection. So we have one Enphase battery or three of the 3.36s, which is 10 kilowatt hours. No backup is about 7,800. Backup's about 13. So you're talking about a 5K difference. Going down to the solar edge, we have a one battery, 8,300, no backup, 13 grand with backup. And again, 10% margin in these prices, 800 bucks, 1300 bucks, and please add tax as well. Hope you got a screenshot of that. That's an important one. 
All right, 10 kilowatt hour battery, some general rules of thumb. Every mansion or small home or, you know, things are different. One battery, you get some basic circuits backed up. Two batteries, you can start to get into a larger appliance or a dishwasher. Um, maybe a smaller, smaller AC for a small house. Three batteries, though, you really start to get into the air conditioner coverage. And this is for blackout backup protection, right? Now we're talking pumps, large appliances, and multiple circuits. We're starting to get into the whole home backup. And obviously four batteries is multiple large loads, like a pool pump and AC and multiple circuits, whole home backup here. So again, we have power basic, 30 to 60% offset, you know, whatever that magic number is. We've got the uh, power saver, which is no blackout backup protection. And then we have a partial battery backup, one or two, or we have a full home battery backup, blackout protection, three to four batteries. How are we doing on time? Okay, we're doing pretty good. So just in case you haven't seen this already, Sonova has a lease storage promotion. It's really a promotion, okay? It's a little deceiving. Sonova's getting, giving us a discount, just to be straight up with you. One of two of you kind of flipped a bit on, on not being free battery. It is a promotion. It is a discount, just to be transparent. It is an offer. And hey, it sounds good when you tell a customer. With our equipment and our prices, we do damn good. And uh, if I were you, I would also utilize this as a BOGO if you're doing a Sonova lease storage. You get one battery, get one free, Mr. Customer. As of right now, these are for backup blackout protection. I do not believe Sonova is currently supporting no backup unless someone wants to correct me and type it in the chat. So for the purpose of the Sonova lease storage, 25 year lease, it will be with backup protection. It is to help with NEM 3.0. Um, they had to just put a value up to 8K per se. It's effective till the end of July. You have to run credit, soft check, 25 year contract, lease storage. There are no buyout options during a lease storage. It's only available in the big three again PGE, SDGE, and SCE. 25 years of repairs, insurance, monitoring, production guarantee, battery replacement. Freaking uh, really amazing on this one. And you do have to have an escalator of 2.9 or 3.9 to get the extra discount. Some of you have tried to use a zero escalator and you're like, the price is kind of close, Jonathan. I'm just like, you know, like again, it's, it's a discount or a promotion uh, of what they're doing for these offerings. So the one battery for their promo is defined as three of the 3.36, one end phase, 10 kilowatt hour, one of the solar edges, or eventually one of the Franklin batteries. So this is a, a design that I did here. And I have, um, I'll show you two examples and then I wanna share with you the deal that I sold last night as we wrap this up in a second. So. We did 21 panels on south facing, not much shade. That helps with lease storage. We did the energy hub, 8.4 kilowatt hour. And uh, this customer, I got them up to 125%. Yes, 100% is probably a little bit better. I did one solar edge, 10 kilowatt hour battery. With backup protection, you can, um, see in solo here, I'll get to in a second, but you can actually define evening usage or storing uh, energy for blackout protection and not giving it back to the grid. We'll get to in just a second. And so this cash price is 44 grand. And solo is saying the leftover utility bill is 46 bucks. It's saying that their average Edison bill on this example is 340. So again, 120 offset, one battery, 8.4, going from 340 a month to $46 left over. I think that's a little low for my taste. I think that could be a little bit higher. Now this job 
has a $6,800 commission, I believe, whatever 70% of 8,400 is. Um, six, yeah, it's about $6,800 commission, sorry. And then one battery we, we recall has 10% margin, so about 1,300 bucks equals about $6,800. Now, if we look at open solar with the same exact system, Open Solar is saying that there's a leftover bill of what? $64. But Solo just told us 46. So again, in my opinion, it's gonna be a range. Also a 8.4 kilowatt, you know, I didn't, should have about 16 kilowatt hours of storage, not 10 kilowatt hours if you're really, really taking care of the customer. So just be advised that based on open solar, based on solo, there is a leftover utility bill that we just don't know what it's gonna be month to month, what the battery can store, what the house is gonna use, what it's gonna give back to the grid and lose. And lastly, here in Sonova backend portal, we plugged in the cash price, we plugged in a 3.9 escalator, work with someone that knows the back end of Sonova. That gives us a Sonova monthly payment of just 200 bucks with a 3.9 escalator, REC panels, solar edge equipment, one battery. That's pretty awesome. 16 cents a kilowatt hour guys with a 3.9 escalator. There's companies starting clients at 18, 19 cents without a battery a couple months ago. So that's a really good deal. And who can see what Sonova is saying the leftover bill will be? $55. So we had 46 solo, 55 Sonova, 64 open solar. And if you're Paul Aon and you're the most ethical, integrity based guy ever, he thinks that these are way too low. He actually thinks these should be higher because we just don't know what we're going to lose to the grid. So Communicate the range with the homeowners. And when you compare it up against a loan with a 499 and a big dealer fee, it's 277. And you have to worry about a 20 grand tax credit and a loan. And here you get to start at 200 with no money down, no loan, no cash with an escalator. Yes. Takes about 11 years to catch up to the 277. If you want a little trick, as you're watching this video or recording, take the number 200 on your cell phone, hit the multiply button. Since we're doing a 3.9 escalator, type 1.039. In year two, this lease will be what? 207. In year three, 215. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years to match this loan. So again, it's up to us to properly just give our clients the best solutions, ask the right questions, ownership, fixed income, savings, it's when you think you're going to move, all the different questions that we should ask. And then lastly, actually, I'm going to do one more thing here. This will be a little bit complex, so forgive me. Take a screenshot of this or, or check out this recording again. Uh, when we look at a lease that we just looked at, $200 in year one, 208 in year two with an escalator, and we can see how much they're giving the lease. We're talking about Sonova leases here per year versus that loan that we just did. At the end of 25 years, the lease is giving 98 grand and the loan is giving 83 grand. But we have to add the leftover utility bill. 64 bucks that could go up five percent a year so at the lease over 25 years the homeowner is paying for the sonova lease payment and the leftover utility bill about 135 grand if we look at the loan we said 277 a month pretend they give back the, the tax credit 83 grand plus the leftover utility bill 119. it's cheaper over 25 years, but you don't get that battery replacement. Keep that in mind. Their current utility bill is 340 with a 5% conservative increase. 
That's 200 grand, guys. So 200 grand paying the utility, Mr. Customer, or how about 119 or 130? Doesn't that sound better? Even with cash, after tax credit, the system is 31K. So it could be about an eight, nine percent return on their investment. It could be a nine, 10 year payoff um, versus we were seeing 16 to 20% return. We were seeing four to six year payoffs if you priced it aggressively. And real fast, uh, before I jump to my, my sale from last night, and, and I'll try to wrap this up, two batteries. I don't believe Solo should be saying $6. I don't like that. Leftover utility bill. 125% offset, two batteries, same system. If I were you guys, I'd be changing the evening usage to high. And if you're doing blackout protection, we have to um, change the percentage you want the battery to retain and not give back to the grid. So I don't like that it's only six. Uh, we all know minimum connection bills under NEM2 were 19 to $24 minimum. You couldn't get it less than that in most cities and, and states. Um, if we could mute the other Jonathan Kaplan, that'd be great. And then we have a cash price. We have a commission of $7,300 now because the margin on the battery went up. Remember, 10% of two batteries. And open solar is saying $43 a month, not six. Same system put into open solar is saying $43 a month leftover bill, two batteries, 8.4 kilowatt, 125% offset. I don't like solos being so low. Let's. Uh, end this with the two more slides here. We So now we're on the two batteries, Sonova lease, 53K, cash price entered, 3.9 escalator. Monthly is just uh, 242. Solar battery, 242 is the lease storage. And there's a 3.9 escalator. Pretty good for two batteries with an awesome system, with the best panels, with the best batteries, pretty freaking cool. And if you compare a loan again with the 499 higher dealer fee, we're at 334. If someone beats me to it, how fast does 243 take on a 39 escalator to beat 334? So again, we take 243 times 1.039, you're two, you're three, you're four, you're five, you're six, you're seven, you're eight, you're nine, about a year, nine and a half. <laughs> year 10, same thing, is when the lease will surpass this particular loan. And again, I hope you're seeing what I'm seeing. Man, cash and lease storage are pretty damn attractive. These, uh, these interest rates and dealer fees are pretty hefty. So that's why we said consider getting their own funding if possible. And lastly, same comparison here. Apologies if you're newer to solar, because this is a lot of information. The lease starts at 243 year one per year. That's 2,900. That loan that we just saw, 334, $4,000 a year, giving the tax credit back. We add in some leftover utility bill, uh, 43 a month, 5% annual increase. So instead of giving the utility, again, 200 grand, we're only giving them 124 or 144. And um, again, about 9% return on investment, 10 year payoff, a conservatively after tax credit cash price, 37K to make a damn good commission um, on this. Tom, I just wanna show my deal from last night in three, four minutes. I know we're, we're coming to the hour here. We can hang out for some Q&A. Um, I just want to show the deal to y'all that I'm really freaking excited about. And then we will we will wrap this up. Sounds good. We had a number of people asking for uh, that spreadsheet. It is proprietary. You can't have it. It 
It takes make, two minutes to make in Google Sheets, and I'll give you the link right now in the chat. Make sure you ask for edit access with Jonathan as well. He loves it when people ask Please for... Please do not ask for edit access. Go to File <laughs> and make a copy. Please learn how to click File and make a copy. If you request edit access, I will ban you from power forever. <laughs> there you go, guys. And, and honestly, if you're decent with Google Sheets, I'm not that smart. Uh, sheet one is one battery. Sheet two is two batteries. And sheet three has some uh, prices of the backup versus no backup there for you. And maybe we should give Tom some admin access so he can add stuff as well because he's a genius. And, you know, Jason is on here too, you know. Dually? It, well, I mean, let me let me just say, if you want to get more tier three deals, then create sheets like that and create tools and share them in the community and get some eyeballs on you and your your amazing skills yeah. to create tools for people. So don't just uh, rely on what other people are creating, but uh, create your own stuff too. share it around. Absolutely. And be advised, um, thank you, Owen, for the call out that batteries will take a long time. They have to go through sometimes county permitting, fire permitting. One Orange County city added a heat sensor. All of a sudden that's needed. My battery here in Vegas took four inspections to move the wire and move the meter. And a new meter was just added to get PTO here in, in Las Vegas. So just be mindful, guys, that batteries are not freaking quick, okay? Hopefully in September when solar app and the new bill passes with expedited permitting, fingers crossed, it'll get faster. But please set expectations. If Ashley's still on here, my amazing project manager, she could tell you that the permitting timelines and inspections and revisions uh, are a little bit larger with batteries and we're doing everything we can to stay up to date with it. All right, so real quick, I know some of you have to hop. I'm gonna show you the sale from last night. She's building an ADU in the garage and uh, she's a very prominent businesswoman in, in Roland Heights City of Industry. She actually owns Franklin and Sons Collectible Show in, uh, in Roland City of Industry. So awesome woman here. So I started with 27 REC panels and solar edge inverters at 10.8. Uh, pretty cut and dry here. I'm going to hold off on a battery. And I came in at 65% offset. West facing afternoon. This lady charges Tesla. She runs the pool. She keeps the house at 67 at night. Stay comfortable. Uh, this is the evening sun here. And she uses 24,000 kilowatt hours a freaking year which is, I don't know why Solo's low here, but it's actually 34 and a half cents, maybe not that high. She's paying about six, 670 to Edison every month. Now, if you notice, let me make sure my rate plan is prime NEM 3.0, which it is. So 667, solo is showing 284. Um, so again, this could be a range, Mr. Customer. It could be 280, it could be 300. You know, I think solo actually just increased this, by the way. I don't believe it was this high. Uh, so just be aware, Mr. Customer, you'll still have a leftover utility bill of 284 with 65% offset. Yeah, that does make sense. So I'm saving you 300 bucks every single month. I've got my D-rate, I've got my concrete tile, I've got my power care 30-year warranty, I've got $7,000 commission. And it's 25 grand, guys. I mean, if she can save 300 bucks a month, today's rates times 12, that's still 3,600. It's still great, freaking great. And, uh, Again, maybe that range, you should probably say a little bit higher. But this lady I know is going to be running the AC and Tesla and pool when the sun is out. So she's going to capture that west-facing system. 
So that's amazing. So I showed them this, I, I blew their mind. And then I said, guys, what about a battery? And then we went to equipment. We went to solar edge battery and that adds 14,470. And if she doesn't want backup, as of today with solo, you have to back out the margin in the project to get this down about $4,000. So if you remember the difference, I like to say it's about $4,000. So I straight up told her, if you don't need the backup, it's about $4,000 less. I don't have blackouts. I don't, I don't need, I have a whole home generator, she said. So what is that, 6,800? You guys with me? Got to back out the four grand if she doesn't want it today. I know it's annoying, but it'll be better. I backed out about four grand. And I said, Mr. Customer, now we're at 47K with 33 grand. And that 10 kilowatt hour battery could potentially save you 62 cents a kilowatt hour. That's almost six bucks a day, $18 a month. Wait, I did that wrong. Six dollars a day, hundred eighty dollars a month times twelve months. That's almost eighteen hundred, fifteen hundred, two grand of savings. Instead of throwing away that energy, you're storing it and getting to use it back from four to nine. Um, is kind of just one of the analogies that I used. And she's like, "Wow, that's amazing." And I'm like, "Yeah." And your post utility bill went down as well. So now it's one ninety nine. And they're like, "Well, let's." Let's get the offset up to 100% and let's uh, let's add one more battery. So then we we got the offset up to 100% exactly, 16.8 system. I'm going to go ahead and put evening usage much more and we're not backing up anything cuz these we took out the prices, right? And so now we're, we're picking one more battery. So now we're choosing two batteries here. And always make sure you do the energy hub if you're doing batteries. I make this mistake quite a bit. I don't even know what to pick here, but that's fine. All right, so we got two, two batteries. I'm gonna come down and I need to back out a little bit more margin, right? 23 grand, I already backed out four grand. This is where it gets a little bit annoying. You have to back out another four or five grand, which I, I discussed this with Matt Gordon already. So my margin went up because my system went up and now I'm gonna subtract a little bit more off of this. So let's do another four off. So let's go up to eight. So now I've done two batteries with backup, no backup, just load shifting, 100% offset, 70K, 20 grand back, 49 thousand dollar cash just in case you're wondering it's uh four dollars a watt mine was actually a little bit cheaper last night and this is saying the leftover utility bill will be 47 dollars so i signed this cash i think it was 60 more like 65 grand or so I, this has a lot of fat margin in it right now on these batteries. It's really supposed to be like four grand off on the first, five grand off on the second. You gotta look at those sheets, see the difference and try to manually back it out of your margin. And the energy hub is also more expensive. So there you um, have any, any questions on, on this Tom uh, example? Just And by the way, guys, let me just preface this by saying she was freaking excited. She's like, wait, if the batteries are full and it's still producing extra, will it still go back to the grid and get a few cents? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, well, good, because I don't get that now. And I'm like, that's an interesting way to think about it. Um, 
and she didn't know NEM2, NEM3. Like I literally just presented the numbers just like this, you know, and told, showed her the, the three options. I recommend two or three options, whether you want to start in the middle and then go down or go up. Um, and we just stayed in the cash. But I tell you, I was pumped. She didn't flinch. She, she didn't know about the NEM3. She heard a little bit of the change. I educated her on all this stuff and boom, bada, bing. And she has referrals and it's great, guys. I can't tell you how great it is. And I destroyed Sunrun, destroyed. So that's, that's what I uh, have to train on today. I appreciate you staying a little bit later for those of you that could stay later. And again, I know this is a lot of information. It's evolving and changing all the time. Backing out the margin is a pain in the butt if you're doing no back out, blackout protection. And uh, Vision will be updating soon and hopefully Solo will be updating soon. Always present the options, use the tips and tricks that we showed. And uh, yeah, how are we doing, Tom? I think I got the questions answered. You're the man. Hey, hey Jonathan, I, I hate to the devil's advocate because you know, you're the man. And uh, I love hanging out with you. And I, this is something new, so I'm just trying to figure it out. So if I'm load shifting with batteries, wouldn't putting panels on the east also be naturally load shifting as well? Uh, I do see the, the, I, the advantage of putting east panels so the home can so, use a little morning. And if not, the batteries are stored. Um, that's a toughie because with her charging the EVs and the pool pump can run 12 to 4 and her AC is going to be blasting more so in the evening. Mm -hmm. That that's that's a toughie. I I don't know honestly how to answer that specifically right now, Owen. I think every case is different. But right. I do I do think putting some east if you could. Obviously hers is street facing so she she wasn't really liking that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, Tom or anyone else that's super, super smart on NIM3 have any? No, I mean, I don't know anyone is really smart on NIM3. <laughs> Even people who have been selling in SRP in Arizona and Hawaii, I mean, they right. think they are, but it's it's a different animal. Um, I think the safest thing is to be super conservative on the after solar bill and you know, do what makes sense based on you know, the azimuth and the shade of each of those roof faces. Um, and and then as vision, you know, or other tools that you, you know, vision is going to have kind of scenario modeling, you know, like this homeowner uses more power in the evenings. So that's going to be the next thing for vision. And then, you know, green button data, interval data, you know, is planned next. So if you've got access to other tools, I think that it's smart to, you know, whatever you're using to, to compare it and to see how different tools are modeling different scenarios for that specific homeowner, because there's a lot of assumptions that are being made, you know, kind of behind the scenes, right? Sweet. Sorry. It's, it's, no, no. it's really interesting. It really my, is. My, yeah, my think... advice is get as many daylight hours on those panels as possible. And so slope of roof factors into that as well as asthma. Yeah. Yeah. Less, <laughs> you know, it's the first time in California now that prices have dropped significantly, you know, that north facing roofs and a battery, you know, may not uh, be a good idea at all. I just want to call out here REC panels, Solar Edge Energy Hub, two batteries. 68k for a 16.8 system with yeah. fat commissions it's four dollars a watt that's crazy there's guys selling sunrun sells cash four dollars a watt without batteries this this is so cool uh, on top of you also might get a rebate for both batteries from sgip thank, which is nice thank you danny yeah about fourteen hundred dollars per battery on this so mr customer you're gonna get twenty eight hundred dollars potentially back conservatively from the utility six months after install, but you're going to get it back. Question. Um, 
if I can, uh, regarding just the selling the batteries with no backup, um, once we do that process and, you know, we fix it on our margin and so forth, after the project is ongoing, how do we go ahead and dictate that to the, you know, what's the process there so we make sure it's like no backup, no interface and so forth? Yeah, thanks, Danny. I, I actually spoke to uh, Daniel D. Fiore, the head of Intake Customer Service. He's amazing. And Donald Lumen and team and Bianca. Definitely leave it in project handoff notes. This is backup only. I'm sorry, no backup, uh, self-consumption only. They will uh, likely need to send an addendum before they, they get the contracts changing. We can click the button, right? So like there's no button to click that says backup only at this very moment. So for the meantime, the Band-Aid is put it into project handoff notes and make sure your PM knows and just let the client know this is an unprecedented time. We will probably send you an addendum to clarify it's backup, no backup. Um, so just set the expectations like that, like I did, and, and you should be good, Danny. But hopefully within the coming weeks, this will all be Band-Aid will be over and we'll just click a button and we'll be rocking and rolling. Yeah, for those of you who are tier three and, you know, close to becoming tier three, soak all this up. You know, this is a lot of information. It's it's new stuff, new frontier for us in California. And share that knowledge with, with others on the Power Platform. Um, and, you know, use this to leverage your own expertise and get more tier three deals. Absolutely. Read it. JB. Somebody asked in the chat, can anyone please explain how do we measure slash choose the right backup percentage? Uh, a quick answer, you know, earlier the slide, general rule of thumb is to double the storage kilowatt hours per the solar. That's just a general rule of thumb. They do that in Hawaii. So again, a, a 10 kilowatt solar system times two is 20 kilowatt hours of storage. Um, so that's six, that 16.8 I just showed you cash. A third battery would be really nice if you really want to be safe. Um, but man, this is a big learning curve for me. And guys, that was my first presentation last night. She did not let me record it. Uh, but if you have any presentations, please record it. We're going to build a Google Drive. And we're going to put these dang presentations in there. We're all going to learn from each other and watch the best of the best, okay? So stay tuned for that Google Drive on future MDM calls. Now, one more question for Tom. Uh, SRP, has SRP basically in Arizona, SRP, has it basically been kind of like very similar to what our NEM 3.0 situation is now? Well, it's just a much lower export rate. So, you know, if you're selling an SRP, you want to cover you know, no more than 70% of their historic usage. And, you know, even then it, it doesn't always look great. You know, for a while they've had one more person on their board of directors that was really kind of anti-solar. And so hopefully that person gets booted off and somebody solar friendly comes on and they can get some more friendly policies. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. There's a few people asking about Hawaii. Hawaii will be coming in July. The main four islands is my understanding, Maui, Kona, Oahu, but not, not Kauai. Um, so Hawaii is coming in July. And the other thing too, JC, to your question is that APS, uh, APS is pretty good. S back to SRP, sorry. SRP, I mean, the price of electricity is cheap out there. Right, it's kind of like Imperial Irrigation District. If, if they're only charging fifteen cents, well, then the numbers really start to not make as much ROI compared to thirty-six to sixty cents. Right, so you got to keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, IID and, and SRP, I would say, are, are similar to what we're facing, which is hardly anything for giving back. The difference is that they don't have. 40 to 60 cents like we do. So the numbers right. really don't make as much sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, thank is you. Is electricity uh, expensive uh, in Hawaii? Is that the reason they want it or is it backup or both? It, yeah, out there, the rates of electricity in my understanding is 60 cents and, and higher. You know, it's it's 
any anything with some solar or some, uh, one battery makes sense out there. You could uh, charge the battery, you could heat your water. You really just don't wanna give much back. Um, so I think they're doing often 90%, 100% offset, one or two batteries, and they're doing a lot of the leases out there or a couple cash deals. Thank you. Yeah. We'll get the uh, Hawaii team training us as well. All right, let's go ahead. I'll, I can hang out for a few more minutes here, but yeah, let's stop the recording. Hey, Seuss, get this uploaded to Knowledge Base. Um, thank